Welcome in everyone to the challenge after show tonight. We are talking about the challenge 37 episode 17 drop dead. And yes, you can see her. She's right here. Our special guest, Tori deal. I'm wearing my team Ruby. I'm the only one here. I'm in team Ruby. But I'm and, um, it's Fuck that team. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Ruby. Ruby for life, man. <laughs> and it's very appropriate, Tori, that you're here tonight because Are You the One season four is now available on Netflix. So if you want to see Tori's original MTV show, it's right there for you guys to watch. I loved it. I know Pam's really into Are You the One. I just watched them um, over like the past couple of months was the first time I watched an Are You the One because Dan, you recommended them. Yes, I God. did. Mm-hmm. We do that. Are You the One, on the man. Show. That was a... <laughs> are you the one like I I did those interviews I was so excited to be on tv and like I would always have a red bull for those interviews and I watched back that season and I was like I look like I'm cracked out like no wonder why people don't like me I'm like oh hey I'm Tori I'm so like I look like I'm way too excited I was like a puppy out of a cage so like now I've done like I don't know 11 shows so I feel way wow. different about the whole experience wow. now. So, so how many years ago was your very first reality TV show? Are you the one? Ironically, my very, the day I walked in on, are you the one, the day we started filming was March 7th. So that's 37 is one of my favorite numbers. That's my birthday. So on the, the, the day of my 23rd birthday was the day I first started in reality TV. And wow. by this year, it will be my sixth year on TV. Wow. Oh, yeah. 11 shows in six years. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Do you feel like it's gotten easier to sit in front of the camera and lights and, and do interviews? Cause I mean, you grow with time, but also it could still be as nerve wracking as your first day. Right. I definitely think because I've grown up publicly with like my relationships and people have seen a lot about me, that anxiety never goes away because you, you never like people, I want to be open. I want to be authentic, but you still want to be able to protect yourself to a certain degree because there's so much judgment around all of these stories. So I still get nervous, like, but at the same time, I definitely give less of a shit. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Cause if you're anything like me, even in daily conversations, I'm constantly overthinking everything I've ever said to anybody, like any <laughs> social interaction. So I feel like I would go in for an interview and then be like, wait, did I say that the right way? Did I hurt somebody's feelings? I'm sure that's yeah. really exhausting. Yeah. Comes with the territory now. I'm like, whatever. If somebody doesn't like me after an interview, then hopefully we can work it out. If not, then add them to the list. Cause there's a whole list of people who don't like me. <laughs> Um, it's so fitting that it's challenge 37. You've got the 37 tattoo. You've made it to two finals in the past. This could be your third one, third time's the charm. I mean, it all just seems to be lining up for you. I know you can't give us yeah. spoilers, but um, were you thinking about that the whole season? Like, oh my God, are all the stars aligning again? Because I know, I know you told us on, well, Pam was texting you uh, one mm-hmm. night when we were, because I saw the 37. I was like, Pam, you got to ask her about it. Yeah. Um, when you won, are you the one? How much money did you win? Did you say that? Thirty-seven thousand dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, insane. That's yeah. Insane. that is really some crazy universal. I know, stuff right and it gets there. crazier. Like I could tell you more and more, but like I honestly don't want to open up those cans of worms. That's right. Um, <laughs> but I do feel deeply connected to it, and honestly, I went into this season not so much like I'm gonna win it because of thirty-seven. I was just like, whatever, however this ends. I'm going to come out better. That was it. Like I trust the process. That is how I felt about it completely. So win or loss, I was like, whatever's going to happen is meant to happen. Yeah. And this episode was quite the episode for you because it opens with kind of like a, a memoriam of a little bit of your seasons on the challenge. What was it like to have to watch and relive some of that stuff and, and see that? Um, yeah, like, like I said, like growing up on TV is weird. I definitely see those years now as like, even though those years were two years ago, there's so much that has changed from then. And so I watch back and I try not to judge myself too hard for some of the things that have happened. And I accept where I am now. And I just want to keep it moving. Like a lot of people want to hold on to the past and I get that. It's fun to do that. We do it with Britney Spears. We do it with everybody, but I'm not going to do that to myself. So I'm just, I'm willing to kind of like, and that's why I don't watch the episodes back if I don't have to, because I'm just not going to relive this over and over again. So I don't have Twitter. I don't want to fight about it. I don't care. Like I want to go on the show. I want to compete. I want to have a great time. I want to play the game. And then I want to go home and be a person. Which is very wise. And that's the other thing is that people, and we recognize that we do it 
sometimes, you know, we like and hate people on the show and we're like, look world, when people hate us for who we like and hate, it's like, we are presented with, we're not judging their real life persona mm -hmm. the character that we're seeing yeah. on this. This is how they appear to us. And this is our take on it. Take that for what it is. Oh yeah. It's, it's a, uh, and on the other side too, because we're like, you know, you are good friends with Josh. I hate Josh on the show. <laughs> lovely in real life. I can't, you know, uh, there's a lot of them like, oh, you know, Josh on the show, big brother, boo. But yeah. that is completely like these, I get that they're being presented to us in a very edited way <laughs> for reality TV. And of course it's not for, like recognizing that those things aren't personal. Right. Is, is, yeah, with that being said, yeah. we've laid into Devin the last two episodes because oh, yeah. of the, the fight that you guys have had about him just <laughs> being mad at you for getting snatched from your team, going to another and then competing for yourself and your team. So can we ask you what that was like for you and you to shed light on your situation with Devin and kind of getting over that hurdle and if you guys have made up and you know what's going yeah. on now? Yeah, I definitely think that it's very difficult for anybody to understand how intense being in the show and in the game really is. And the closer you get to the end, the closer you feel to that money, the more realistic it feels, the more painful things feel when they don't go your way. So I think it was just this domino effect of me obviously being in a lot of pain because I was really sad I left Emerald. And then obviously Devin was really sad that I decided to start playing for Ruby. And I see his side, but it took us to get to this point for him to truly apologize to me. So like, we've talked it out. It's, it's a game that takes it, it, it makes the best of you. Sometimes the worst of you, like it's so hard. We all want it so bad. And like, you know, Devin, like people don't put enough respect on him as a competitor. A lot of people think he's not great. He is fucking great. I've worked next to the guy. I've won with the guy. Like he's beaten me in, in a lot of shit. Like he's great. He's so good mentally. And I think that because he's finally starting to prove that he felt like he was getting really close. And then he almost felt like that got taken away from him. So it's just this domino effect when you're in the game, but like, and, and you'll see kind of how it continues. Like it's not necessarily over yet. This little feud, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I can say now that it's done. And I'm so thankful. He is, if I had to say the two friends that I've walked out off the show with that are closest to me, Anissa and Devin by far. So yeah. I'm so thankful for their friendships and yeah, like it's a game. It hurts. Yeah. And it's a million dollars. Like the million we we literally make jokes about it when we're filming. We're like, if they lowered the price money, we wouldn't be <laughs> such assholes to each other. We wouldn't be. Yeah, <laughs> but it's crazy you say that because we saw CT tonight get really angry in deliberation. So I wanted to ask you what it was like to be there because it got really heated. And I think where he's coming from is a perspective of being very old school in the game where he's used to people calling people out, talking shit to each other, saying names. And that wasn't really happening here or this season. I feel like people have become very nice to each other and have held their alliances and their friendships very near and dear. Um, so it's funny you say, you know, if we lowered the price, we wouldn't be such assholes, but you could almost make an argument that people are being a little bit kinder to each other. At least that's yes. what it feels like watching so many years of the show and being on the outside. We're not in the mm -hmm. house. Yeah. But what was it like sitting in de uh, the deliberation tonight and seeing kind of CT get mad at everybody for not choosing names, not calling people out? Well, you know, it's interesting. We have 20 minutes to sit in there and talk. You know, TJ says you have 20 minutes and we really do get 20 minutes and you guys don't see all 20 minutes of that. And the producers are like, guys, everybody has to say something. You're on a TV show. So talk. So mm -hmm. like it, I can understand not even from like a game perspective, from a production perspective of like why it's like just talk. But you have to understand if you speak anything you say can and will be held against you. Yeah. So it's like this double-edged sword of, oh, yeah. am I going to be entertaining? Am I going to speak up? Am I going to work for that callback? Or am I going to play it smart right now? Hopefully dodge another bullet and make it further in this game. It's always that balance. And you're, and, and the reason why we're all being nicer to each other this time around is because, I mean, we had the opportunity to have that vet alliance. We've never had that in our lives. And it was like a bunch of vets who've gotten so close, some winning, but have gotten so close to the end and not making it like we're all gonna, we know what we're fighting for. We know how many times we've ran around this track and haven't made it to the end. If I see somebody win this season, I'm not going to let it be a new person because look how many people mm -hmm. are here who have fought so hard for it. Like there is this camaraderie that builds amongst us. So yeah, like it's hard to not work with people when you have the same, when you respect their hustle. And that's really the kind of point that we got to in the game. 
I did think though it was again because it was literally crickets at least from our point of view of those four or five four guys that were on the table and I couldn't believe I love Manuel but it's like he's a rookie and he's never gone in how are you bets not how's Devin not sitting there well I guess they're on the same team I mean it just becomes how is Nelson and Logan how is Nelson not saying well it makes the most sense i mean it just is logical ct had to say it well but it's like it's not mean or picking on anyone H how are we gonna not call out a rookie that's never been in the other thing is is like you kind of know the decision was already made before deliberation because you know logan wasn't gonna say emmanuel's name and you knew emmy wasn't so you knew it really wasn't up to ct like you saw where the alliances were before we got in right. so i don't think anybody wait uh you mean devin wasn't gonna pick Yes. But Kyle wasn't going to. Kyle, 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 yes. Kyle, Kyle. Kyle, and, okay. Kyle wasn't going to. Yes, yes, yes. And because Kyle didn't like Logan. Like you saw that. Right. That, that yeah, had built I up. So, that. Yeah. Well, I think it was just kind of like playful rivalry. Like, right. I don't actually think it was like, I don't actually think it was personal. It just kind of became their game. Um, yeah. But yeah, like Lo or Kyle had obviously issues with Logan. And then, um, yeah, Emmy wasn't going to vote for Emmanuel. So right. she's like, you know, where you, yeah. you all knew where it was going. I so. guess I'm an idiot because why was I surprised? Why I was like, why would you not vote in um, Emmanuel? He's never been in yet, you know, and that's kind of been the mantra of this season, the rookie who hasn't gone in. But I guess, you know, things have changed now. The rules are yeah. different. Jenna, I was surprised too. I thought for sure, because I thought CT would and that Emmy would just be outvoted. I knew she wouldn't vote for him, but I didn't know. Kyle. Kyle would have yeah. it Logan. And I was like, which just makes the most sense. Like, oh, you know what else I think it was? Aha, uh -huh. here it comes. <laughs> Kyle and Devin. Kyle and Devin are very close. Yes. If Logan got voted in, Logan wasn't going to call out Devin. There was a pact before. So it was in Kyle's best interest to protect Devin to vote in Logan because he knew Logan wasn't going to call out Devin. So it was, it was to protect Devin. Right. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, well, I want to get into the, um, the drop dead uh, challenge tonight. And yes. Tori, uh, first of all, I love, this is like one of my favorite uh, challenges that we've had this season. It reminded me of the one that was on Rivals 2. If you remember, they kind of had a gauntlet as well, but they got to like sit in those bomb things and go across yes. and try to get people. So I we love that. We actually thought we back. had to do that when we pulled up. What's that? We actually thought we were going to be on those things when we that, put up. We were always like trying to like figure the game out. Yeah. That would have been, that would have been awesome. But my question for you, Tori, is what is going on with the beef between you and Amanda, especially on from Amanda's side? Why does she, why does she have such an issue with you? Where did it stem from, et cetera, et cetera? You pause, you, Amanda. are you talking about Amanda? Yeah. yeah, Amanda. And why does she have such a beef with you? I'm just so confused by it. Where did it start? <laughs> what, what's going on? So, I mean, listen, I don't know. Um, yeah. Supposedly it's existed since the beginning of time. I yeah. found out about it midway through the season. Um, yeah, like, I, I don't know. There really hasn't ever been clarity on it. I think she thinks I'm fake. She thinks I'm, um, I'm a chameleon. These are the words that she uses. I shift when I'm around people, um, overrated. Or a steroid head. I don't know. These are just the things that she wow. doesn't like about me. I'm obviously not on steroids. Very creative with her adjectives. Do you yeah. think that she's just, well, first, okay. So first last week we talked about this because Amanda had tweeted and I saw that you responded something about seeing people tweeting. Long story short, Amanda wrote, when you had that fight with Devin, she tweeted like, love seeing a fake bitch exposed. And we were like, I don't understand how it's exposing fakeness to try and win for your team and not throw it like she did. Like that's not exposing a fake bit. We were saying Amanda's amusing. We, she's been real fun this season because it's not a lot of storylines, but it's like, how is that exposing a fake bitch? And do you think, I guess my question for you is, do you think she's just making this up to have a storyline? Like that this is- I don't even want to comment on it because this is one of those fires that I don't want to feed. Like it doesn't make me feel mm -hmm. good. I don't want to interact in it. I don't want to have, I don't, I don't like it. Um, and I think that it's kind of fucked up. I think she just like goes on rants about me and I'm mm -hmm. like a little over it. So I don't want to keep adding to it. I don't like, if yeah. she doesn't like me, cool. 
well, let's right. let's keep it light then, Tori. Um, with the bombs that were coming across, what what was the weight <laughs> of those? Because CT was not affected by these bombs, but None. everybody else was. So was it just that he's a, like a, more of a mass where he just because they were bouncing off him, but everyone else was. He, flying he off was just stuff. like CT is just another monster. I don't, <laughs> we don't we don't get it. We don't get it. We like I didn't I didn't see his pupils when he was up there. Like he just goes into this like <sighs> mode. <laughs> just like del- he delivers every time mm-hmm. um but yeah I don't know I can't I I don't know what about him makes him so incredible except that he just has it he has that x factor and like it's like yeah I um, feel like he's so fearless and confident and with this sort of challenge I was thinking if you hesitate for a second you give them that one little inch that they need to knock you off but he just tunnel vision to the platform, right? completely fearless. And so therefore it's like, the balls don't affect him. If they hit him, they just <laughs> run, brush right off of him. But He's also he was it. using them, he was using them as counterweights yeah. to keep yeah. himself on. It was this like perfect dynamic balance of like, d- like using it at, to help him stay balanced. At one point in time, I think he, he flung which swing. one onto yeah. the platform. He, he rope like, swinged onto it. Yeah, it was great. It yeah, ball. like he just was, he, he adapted every single ball. like. He just has it. Yeah. And I have another question for you that's sort of out of chronological order from that now, but with, so Emerald's been dominating all season. Was there ever behind the scenes? Cause every week I'm like, this is the week they're going to merge the teams so that it's not six people versus three people versus four mm-hmm. people versus six people. Every week since the cells started, I'm like, this is the week. They're gonna mm-hmm. combine the other two teams. Was there a uh, behind the scenes internal conversation that was like, how are we going to have five people on a team where uh, the amount of people works? Because in every other season and forever in the challenge, they would have to sit out if the teams weren't even. Yeah. They didn't just play. Especially that football one, Tori. That football. Well, yeah, so we, like, if you notice, the very first challenge we had was on this beach, right? Like, you see it on that beach. And then when we go from um, partners to teams, we went, we were at that same beach. And so right when we thought we were going to come, we were going to have another shuffle. We arrived at that beach again. So all of those challenges were on that beach. It was the money heist one though. And so we thought that was it. We were like, Oh, this is the, this, we're on shuffle beach. We're shuffling again. We're going to even out the teams. And then we didn't do it. And then like, we started to get nervous because this season is starting to reflect on cutthroat. And I believe that in the final of cutthroat, there was a team that only had two players on it. It was like a girl team. So we were like, okay, like there is, they're going to run this final uneven. It's going to be the first time they've done it since season 20. They've had they they're mimicking the last half of the season after cutthroat. So I honestly thought after Logan left that it was just me and Nelson on my team. And I was like, Oh shit. You're like, We're gonna All right. Gotta put my cape back on. on. Be- because ever since you've been on Ruby, you've been like the team mascot and motivator. You're like, come on guys, we, we got this. We're going to do this. Trying. <laughs> yeah. So I did the math before the episode started. And I noticed that there was like 11 people left and I was like well if they do one more guy and one more girl elimination it's going to be nine and I'm like nine is such a weird amount of people to have in a final for the challenge usually a nice even number or something like that so I I, I had no idea there was going to be that twist tonight but I was like okay this makes more sense now it's down to 10 and they're probably going to take another guy and a girl out I know you can't say what's going to happen to her but (laughs) that's what I'm assuming and then they'll have eight for the final but yeah it's just what a that, can we let's talk about that twist a little bit i mean that was just like, right. think, like i was not expecting it me, me this, either uh, so yeah. good and and tori tell us what what was going through your head during that twist because obviously you weren't expecting it months ago when you experienced it no 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 i wasn't <laughs> i was not excited at all i was like i was like oh we're going to the final i was like you know what fuck it it's me and nelson like two of us together and then when he said rejoined the group it was like right that signified that that was like when Corey and Bettina got to rejoin the group. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's when there was another change because Corey and Bettina were partners. They had just beaten Jeremiah and Amber. Right. And then they were, instead of them picking new partners, Corey was going to pick like Casey, Bettina was going to pick CT. They just rejoined the group. And then that's when everything changed again. So at that point in time, when he said rejoin the group, I was like, it's gotta be another big change. If we're mimicking the season, that's where it's going. I was super nervous. I'm looking around and I'm like, there's clearly a chance that, you know, there's only a few girls left. So, and two girls are going into elimination. If there, if it is a girl and girl and a guy and a guy, 
two girls are going in. So your chances are going in are pretty high. So I was definitely nervous, but yeah, like this is, you have to pivot, you have to adapt. So I was just kind of trying to stay focused at that time. Yeah. I have two random questions for you. One is every time you say something like the final or the producers like, nope, say TJ's final, say <laughs> TJ's final because, because right. Like it is kind of like, you TJ's know what world, man, they almost kind of like, when they ask us questions, they'll throw in. So how do you feel about TJ's final? And then you mm-hmm. kind of like pick up the answer and interject mm-hmm. it in your response. So I, I think that that's kind of how that happens. Yeah. We um, always laugh a little like, bit they want to eliminate the producer aspect out of the show. Like right. TJ's the handler. He's yeah. the one that we point the fingers at. Handler now. It's his final, you know? Yeah. Come we on. always laugh a little bit about like how <laughs> explosive TJ comes in. Like he's always coming in on like a bus that's on fire and <laughs> like a motorcycle. And it's like TJ's final, TJ's challenge. Yeah. Yes. Um, the other thing I always wonder, and I've never gone to ask anybody this, even though we've interviewed so many people before, I can't believe I've never gone to it. It's just how many days go by in between regular challenges and eliminations because you guys are drinking a lot. I mean, the, the drinking is less than it used to be, yeah. but I mean, you're partying, you're getting hammered. So you can't party right before a challenge. You're going to be hung over. So how many days go by? Yeah. So our schedule is literally, I can tell it to you. Monday, we go to a challenge. That night, we have to go out to a club. The next day is Tuesday, just in case you didn't know what came after Monday. (laughs) And then you have deliberation and then you have elimination. Wednesday is interview day, kind of a day off, but you have like probably an hour to two hours that you're going to be in interview answering questions about what had just happened. And then you restart the cycle on Thursday, challenge and club, Friday, um, elimination, Saturday off day, Sunday interviews start again on Monday. That's oh, wow. so you're filming two episodes a week, two full episodes a week. Very nice. Why did I just assume there, there had to be story? five days in between? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dan. I, I was wondering how long how long she was there for the. It's been eight, it's going to be eighteen episodes next week coming up. So how well, long? We had a huge quarantine in the beginning, so yeah. it and I I can't tell you exactly how long it ended up because I can't disclose right right Um, you don't know if I leave next episode or if I go all the way but I can say whoever went all the way ended up being there probably like close to three months wow because we find it so interesting that back in the day they only filmed 10 episodes for a whole season now they're doing 20 (laughs) episodes and they see and the episodes are an hour and a half and not an hour so it's just like you got you guys and girls are there for so much longer than they, they must've originally went there for a month and they're done, you know, like that's it. No, I would love to go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, also so curious. would we, Tori, so would we. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. We're back. Oh, we lost definitely you. glitched. Dan definitely had a glitch Dan. in his system. It is matrix. Dan. Dan, what, what did you say earlier? I just said, we would love to go back to the 10 episodes a season with only an hour. I mean, jam pack it. <laughs> Pack it in there. Well, I'm with on you. that topic, Tori, I'm curious of what you do in the house when you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out. Where do you go? I don't know if you can journal. You don't have access to phones. Like, what do you do? Journaling is really hard because you just can't really get out of the game. Like, you just start to journal about the game and then you're journaling about the game and you wrote it down and you're like, oh, can't have paper in my brain, you know? Yeah. Someone's gonna fucking run around with it. So definitely the sauna, if there's a sauna, if there's a pool, like I got really good at swimming um, when I was there because I just would do laps in the pool. Um, yeah, like I would try to just do things that like, I would always sit outside on that big lawn. I mean, listen, there's not a lot to do, work out yeah. a lot. Yeah. And then like create drama sometimes <laughs> like that pizza night way back when with Fessy and Josh, I mean, like that night we were all pretty fucking bored and I don't think I would have done that. And I, I regret it because Fessy is my friend and do feel bad that he got sent home. I thought that was pretty like, you know, I feel I bad mean, about that. Also, who would have thought that would have blew up the way that it did? I mean, you know, they were fighting bad. I don't, I do feel bad. Like they're like brothers, you know, it's like, when, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't hit my brother, but I guys can be like that. So like if you and your brother going at it, you're like, bro, shut the fuck up. Then it's kind of like a bro thing. And it's yeah. not really like this malicious thing, but 
Yeah, I don't know. Like that night was boring. So that's why we were like, pizza, blah, 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 yeah. blah, your mind. So like when we're bored, we do create drama and shit blows up. And sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good. But yeah, you know, there's really not much to do. Yeah. yeah. So especially what does a day off look like? Like that's just a normal time. So does a day off everyone trying to kind of be by themselves or does everyone paint my toenails? Yeah. Reorganize my sock drawer if I have one or my suitcase. Uh find some rocks, paint them with nail polish. Oh, okay. Uh, Devin wrote a play. That oh. was pretty awesome. Um, Why did we not see that? Well, oh yeah, my God. Amazing. Are the cameras <laughs> there on that? your day off, Tori, too? Yeah. They are. Mm-hmm. Cons- even on a There's day off. There's at least like one camera crew there. Yeah. During this COVID era has been very difficult because usually like in the past, we would have gone out to like a day club or we would have gone out to like but we haven't really gone out a lot because of COVID. So you're just like chilling. Yeah. It's like, and like, that's when you get to the point where you're like, all right, fuck it. Just let's do like, let's, let's go. Like, yeah, let's, let's, let's move the game. Yeah. Was his play a musical? <laughs> it wasn't a musical. <laughs> but it was, uh, Huey, Huey was the star of it. Oh, amazing. Oh, so this man. is way early in. Oh yeah. Of course, Huey, Huey is. That makes sense. That feels right. You should be the main star. character. Emmy was yes. in it. CT was in it. Ed Amazing. was in it. It was pretty fucking funny. I did, I'm Ed actually Jimmy. so upset that they didn't air that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are some really good moments that didn't get any light. One being. Damn, you know, that's so unfortunate. Because really we don't mean, get to see a lot of you guys just like actually having good, clean fun. Like not yeah. being pissed yeah. at and, each other. And that's what I think we miss a lot, Tori, from the older mm-hmm. seasons. They showed a lot more of that just prank stuff goofy stuff uh stuff mm-hmm. that would just make us laugh and we we, we do miss it as a as an after show so yeah. put, in, put in a good word for us over there tell oh the after show wants more goofy stuff <laughs> but yeah. no we do we I just love that. it's getting We're so it's, it's, it's so much more serious yeah. now and i guess that's because it's for a million dollars and all but i mean yeah that's true you know it maybe, been the money, the fucking maybe money. we don't know we, we we always speculate but we don't really know but we would love to get back to just those the goofy even yeah. when you started off on you were dirty 30 was your first season right yeah. Even back then, I mean, it was it was more goofy and a little more light. And was it what was it? Do you remember the first how much money you got to win on the on that season? That was the first time that it was up to a million. That was the first million. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it all started to change. It got, <laughs> yeah. got real dark. It got real dark on the challenge house. It did get dark. It feels dark. God, yeah. it feels yeah. dark. You're well, all in the same I mean, colors. You saw being like rainbow colors back in the day. It was awesome. I was yeah. loving it. So yeah. as a cast member, what do you think? Because we feel a super big difference that came with the skulls and now it's spies, lies, and allies and the sort of uh, you know, all these missions and TJs, it's a little heavier, but also the storylines of people. Do you feel that it's more obviously the competitions are steeper because of the money, but the storylines aren't as strong as they used to be. And we're wondering if you think it's because they keep bringing in new rookies who we don't know as well. What do you, what's your take on that as a cast member? I mean, like you feel like you feel, you don't feel as connected to the well, people we don't, that are- The main storyline was, will Josh make it to a final? Like that was a main storyline. Like we've had like romances that have rocked our worlds and friendships and we know, and now we're like, I. Like we're not seeing, there's no Nani and Casey. We're not seeing any closeness. We get yeah. a tiny bit of you and a man while talking, but we know you're more committed to the game. I mean, it doesn't seem like an epic love story. They're not developing it into a, it seems like you're both completely on the same page of like, I really like you, but yeah, you win a million dollars. Mm-hmm. And CT is great. Like there's no real, Amanda's a bitch. It's like, there's no real <laughs> storyline, but those are that like, they're one, one line are things that are amusing from week to week. And Emmy has sort of, <laughs> Emmy's good. Like, again, I guess like, you Pam, what you're saying is there's a lot, but they feel weak to, to you. Yes, you know, there's no real yeah. We don't feel connected or like, we're really getting to know people or their relationships at all. So I, you know, I, I just wonder if that's just happened because the show has blown up to be this big thing and like people will come on it and want to come on it just to be on it. Where I think as back in the day, it was kind of like, cool, we're on the challenge, whatever. Like Anissa, like somebody who is an oh fucking G of the show, who literally just was herself, like, right. and still just is herself. Like yeah. one of the most refreshing people to have on the show, like. Yeah, I think that I think that that era is 
is coming to an end because of social media. And, mm-hmm. and I, and I, you know, hope, and you also, you know, we're pulling people from other big shows and I can't complain because I got pulled from a show like, and oh, this an MTV, that's what it was I an feel MTV like. show. So our so, dream, right. We want more real world where we're invested in the people and then they cast them on the challenge or something like that. Yeah. Well, are that's you guys watching All Stars? Um, of yes. course. Yeah, what? we covered on our <laughs> That's. Are you liking All Stars? Yeah. 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 Do you feel like you like All Stars more than the regular challenge? Um, Maybe. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'm, yeah. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Do you watch All Stars? You, you, there, you guys are covering yeah, it on official. Podcast. You guys are you guys yeah. are covering it on your podcast. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. You know, but you know, when you came on to the show for Dirty Thirty, I was like, oh, I already know this girl because I was obsessed with Are You the One. So it was like such an easy. Like, I knew all your storylines from Are You the One. I'm like, oh, maybe she'll do some more funny stuff because you were such a goofball on Are You the One. I was like, oh, I love this girl. I'm so pumped to see her again. Oh, thank you. But when you're welcome. But when we get Emmanuel and Emmy, I didn't watch Romanian Survivor, and yeah, and so, so right. it's like, it's hard to. To, to get Different that connection act. like we have with MTV shows that we all are obsessed mm-hmm. with and watching uh, constantly, so. And yeah. finally, those two who have remained, and Logan, I feel like we've gotten to know, but we come back for the competition and the vet storyline and the vets that know each other. That's what we care about. You and Devin being in a fight because your friends is a huge thing to us because it's one of the only interpersonal dramas that that really took place this season yeah. and we miss the interpersonal reaction whether it be drama or romance or even just yeah it's, it's a bummer to have so many new people that you're that don't ever get developed as characters for us right. that then fall through like when Kyle came a few new people that was around and then now we know Kyle right so, and Kyle had a storyline so well, it's I think that this season, the producers did not anticipate the vets to work together the way that we did. Like one of the producers even came on our podcast and he was like, no one, no one thought it was going to happen. Like nobody thought you guys were actually going to stick it out. So I think that that was underestimated. Like, I think that they really believed like, oh, the vets are going to be like stabbing each other in the back, you know, and throat and every other place they can. Right. And then when we just like kind of annihilated the rookies, it left you guys, the viewers, really nothing to grab onto right but the thing is is at that point as players in the game we didn't give a fuck because we're like we're trying to stay in this game I'll do by any by any means necessary I will work with whoever I have to work to to work with until I get to this point I am very interested to see what's going to happen next season if there is a next season I am very interested to see who gets casted and I'm very interested to see how this one plays out because I can't see the people who were in the first rookie wave coming back and wanting to work with us. Like, I, I just feel like they're going to come in heavy and like, I respect it. So I, I just think that it's, this might've been a cool season for a lot of the vets. We might've made it really far and had great friendships, but I don't think it's going to be like this ever again. Yeah. Yeah. You talked earlier this episode about how you just want to compete and that's what um, your passion is being on the show. Do you still have that fire now after this past season that passed and do you still want to continue oh, being yeah. on the show for the foreseeable future? Fuck yes. <laughs> I really, I love competing so much. Like it's one of the only things where it's one of the only places in the world where I don't think about anything else. Like so I just, I, I, I'm like, I feel clear in my mind, not clear in my mind, but just so focused on one task that I think about nothing else. And that's just stress relieving for me. Because when I think about myself in real life, I'm like writing a book or I'm working on putting out another one, or I'm doing a podcast or I'm doing this, or I'm working out, or I'm getting my personal trainer's license, all of these things that I'm juggling. But when I'm in the moment I'm competing, there is nothing to juggle. It's just the moment. So it is refreshing to, to compete. And I love it. And I, I don't mind if I get fucked up while I do it either, because like I yeah. signed up for that. Like, yeah. I don't watch football to watch one team annihilate the other one. No, I want to see good <laughs> gameplay. So yeah, I hope that, I hope that there's enough girls on the show, like me and like Casey and like, yeah, every other fucking yeah. girl who's an incredible competitor out there. There's plenty of them. Like keep bringing them back. Cause it's like better to see competition like that anyway. Agree. Absolutely. I, I know, I don't want to keep you too long. I feel yeah. bad. I know that you wanted to, you just did your best. <laughs> you had yeah. to go about the rest of your night. So that's actually, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I, yeah. I'm cool to say for like five more minutes, unless you guys are about to wrap and start talking about the episode. No, I have a quick question then on that. Cause you're saying like the people like that just come and 
are themselves and come to have a good time for whatever reason. If you're on a team with someone that hasn't trained and worked out and is going to, do you resent that person that's not a fierce competitor or is it like, I don't care, you're cool. I'm like learning to not be that way. I okay. think original Tori is so competitive that yes, I do. I did feel that way, but I'm learning that you can't control that. And when somebody's on your team who doesn't, you can't control it. So you just have to, if somebody is willing to try, you have to work with them because they're on your team. And that's the mentality now that I want to take with me going forward, because getting mad at somebody for not working out is not going to make them work out harder. Mm -hmm. Like that's not inspiring people. So you have to inspire them to work, and work out. You have to give them a reason. You have to give them something to fight for. You have to show them how bad you want it. And maybe that's going to make them want it too. Um, and then also, I don't want to look like an asshole for not liking somebody because they're not a great player. Like that also doesn't feel good. Well, uh, so yeah, I'm trying showed, to get better at that. The I'm producers trying. showed your positivity when you went over to Ruby this season too, even though you knew they were the the weaker team, you know, just by the results of the the, the challenges in the past. But the the you know the positivity you tried to bring to Ruby, we thought was great. We were really into that. We're like, okay, great. And then we yeah we 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 all couldn't figure out why Devin was so upset with you for trying to win on another team. It's like you got traded. Why would you still be? rooting for right. the old football team. You're on a new football team now. So. Growing. That's where we don't need to go back to that. But like, furthermore, it's like not, not just not win, but lose so that your old team wouldn't be in a guy. It's like, yeah. Yeah. and that's when my ego kicked in. Like my, that move for me was strictly ego. I was like, I just can't let the girl who took my spot go and beat me in a physical challenge. It was right. a one-on-one -on -one in that for me, like, that was the battle I was fighting in those trenches. It was not about, it, it was, it was pretty selfish. And I do feel bad because I see where he's coming from. But at the same time, like, that's why I get cast out on the show because I have feelings and I'm willing to do something with them. So right. it wouldn't have made a storyline had I just played with Emerald boring. Yeah. But also it was logical because if you just threw the mission so that no one on your old team would have to go in, you'd probably be, it's like, you have to play to not have your team lose. I, I but yeah, except then. Yeah. Oh, and Kyle, that's the question. So, do you believe, so that was the episode where Kyle took the, screwed it all up for the alliance that UNCT had created to win together, which we were like, finally, if they're going to have six against three and four, like they have to unite. Do you think Kyle made a mistake or was he completely doing that on purpose? I still can't he figure it out. I still have <laughs> literally no idea what goes on in Kyle's brain. Yeah. I just don't. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I don't comprehend it. I don't know if he does it on purpose or if it's truly an accident. I don't know if sometimes it's on purpose or sometimes it's an accident. Yeah, I can't figure it out. <laughs> I have no idea. Neither can we. I fall for it every time. I don't know why I think that he, it's like, I know he's smart. We see it. He knows how to compete, but for some reason, like the, the tiny details of the instructions sometimes is what screws him up. Mm -hmm. So I have reason to believe he's just, spoofing and being an idiot but also it's like he's probably more calculated than that but he he kind of has me uh, I believe him <laughs> too many times more than I should I mean final, we love question, <laughs> yeah. final question from me Tori um who do you think Logan should have chosen tonight in the elimination because Emmanuel he's just got so much endurance so yeah. I, I just thought I, I thought he should have chose someone else and I just wanted to get your opinion on who you think he should have chosen there's only three other Two other guys, really. Three other guys. If I say who I think he should have chosen, it's going to get me in trouble. So I'm oh, not okay. Gonna say All right. Him. Okay. I'll tell you. I think you should have chose Devin. So that's my thought. <laughs> I just think like, he doesn't have as much endurance. I mean, I and yeah. by the way, until these last couple episodes, I was Devin's number one fan. So um, yeah, I, I did not like the way he treated you. I just thought it was oh, really didn't make sense to thanks. me. Thanks. Yeah. You know what? Devin and I have a really long history. Like. If you look back at Second Chances, that was the spinoff from Are You the One. We were huge rivals on Second Chances. Dirty 30, we went into that kind of being like, uh, we were rivals on Second Chances. And then we had double agents where he threw the challenge to get me sent home. I don't know if people remember that, but literally in double agents, I go home because Devin was like, fuck Tori when we are out of the game. Oh, and now I we're like, that. I remember either. That's yeah. Yeah. Like it, it was in the fourth episode, like in the very beginning of after I leave the season, but like, yeah, like I got eliminated pretty early. Um, but yeah, he lit it deliberately is like, yeah, like people want to get Tori. And so I'm going to throw the challenge. It was the rope one when he was like trying to pull up the rope from that thing and never did. Anyway, if you had, uh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have this huge history, this huge up and down of 
not really liking each other. This is the first time that we are like truly, we are friends. We genuinely, genuinely are friends. And we do have some hiccups this season, both him and myself. We have moments where we weren't the best of friends for each other, but I can say that now we are the best friends. So everything that's happened in the past, this is months behind us now. And him and I are closer than ever. So I guarantee if we go forward in, in a game, we're never going to have a problem ever again. And yeah. if we do, we'll be fine after yeah. it because we we'll bounce it back out. after after seasons of fucking yeah. problems. And again, um, grain of salt. Dan's Devin's biggest fan. He loves him, so it's not yeah, like really yeah. mad at him on your behalf in real life. But yeah, but and I appreciate you, that. Yeah. When you no, we are. We're ready to throw <laughs> down. We're ready to see Devin. <laughs> I've been ready this whole season. I'm like, Devin, I have some words. <laughs> I get, it seems like Devin is the closer it gets and the closer it gets, Mm -hmm. the more in his head he's getting with tasting the money and that comes out. Listen, it's so funny for all of us to even comment on what it's, what you guys are going through because I know myself and it's funny for me to like talk about how people are handling things or if they're emotionally spiraling, I would explode. I don't know if I could last like two weeks in that house. So it's you a lot of you a lot of us could. like sit on our couch and comment on it, but we don't actually know what it's like to be there. But listen, it's all good. Like yeah. we know what we sign up for when we're on the show. We know that we're going to get picked apart. That's why we have to be easy on ourselves. Like yeah. no one has a perfect season, and if you have a perfect season, it's probably boring. Yeah, yeah. you know. And yeah. then you're going to get, and maybe not. Maybe it's not. You know. But like, um, you're going to get comments about that either way. Oh. So either way, you have to deal with what people think. We know what we sign up for. Talk your shit, guys. Talk your shit. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're here for. Yeah. yeah. Um, but back to the who I think Logan should have picked. Like I said, Logan and Devin had a pack. Logan and Devin used to play chess. They probably played 20 games of chess a day. And Logan would beat Devin 90% of the time. Logan is wow. very smart. And so they had a pact that on this one that Logan wasn't going to pick Devin. So, and Devin's really smart. He walked up to the elimination on, on that board where I eventually had the numbers like counting down. Devin was like, oh, it's a puzzle board. Oh, it's a puzzle board. He was saying that walking up, psyching Logan out. Like, okay, Devin wow. will pick him. It's a puzzle. And I think that's kind of like, I don't think that that's what swayed him to pick a memoir. I honestly think that Logan is a such, he's, he sticks to his word. Like he knows his word is his bond. And if he ever goes against his word, he'll never have his word again. So I think that he picked a memoir to prove to Devin that his word is his bond. And if he ever comes back in future seasons, then Devin will trust him no matter what. Yeah. That was really insightful because I, I, I figured that they must have had a deeper relationship yeah. than what we saw because I didn't really know that they were friends, but they hung out daily, they played chess together. Yeah. Wow. Best friends. I yeah. feel like I saw them taping up the chess board tonight. They were like, I think I, I saw Logan like trying to figure like they must've played so much on it. They just wore it down. I swore. So I'm taping it back together. You know what happened? It ended up being the uh, Ruby until death sign. So <laughs> there's a, so they put like yeah. a paper and they wrote Ruby till death on the back of it. And then fucking Logan left it out in the rain. So uh, then we uh, lost our chess board. So then we had to tape it back together to fix it. Um, but yeah, like they, they put it on the chessboard all the time. I feel like Logan is one of those people that can do everything really well. That only yeah. Emmanuel is the only one that could have beat him of all those guys Yeah. in this. Like it just so happened. Who knew you were going to be jumping over the rocket as opposed to like, if you're thinking puzzle numbers, strength, it just so happened it was jumping over it, which is the only, I feel yeah. like Logan, even knowing a man while I'm watching it, I was, I was still thinking, don't sleep on Logan. He, we've seen him. He's another interesting rookie because I think he, someone said he learned football, American football, and then applied it like that. He's very smart and strategic. Yeah. Well, so I was really sad to see him go, but he also said he wanted a surfboard that's what he wanted with the money. And tonight, Emmanuel was like, I will bring my family food and, and nourishment and education. And he was like, I would get a surfboard. So I was like, okay, I'm not that sad. But yeah, yeah. I love Logan. I mean, obviously, Logan, Emmy, and Emmanuel are the rookies we've become invested in because they've been there long enough. But, right. but yeah, even interpersonal stories, though, they haven't gotten much. Yeah. Both he and, and Emmy's relationship, friendship, and your and Emmanuel's friendship, relationship, but all still very light and loose. There's no real investment. Yeah. Given to and I, I wish you like could hear more about his story. Emmanuel's story is 
so crazy. Like we wish think, sure. like, we yeah. wish sure. and so it's, crazy. and like, I, I was rooting for him because of his story so much. Like he is a really beautiful person and he's very smart and very calculated and plays a very, like very not sneaky game, but he plays under the radar on purpose mm-hmm. like he's trying to move through without being seen and he did it so well like this was obviously the first elimination he'd ever been in um but yeah like his story is crazy and like he has so much to fight for and that money could help him so much so yeah i i was even though i was screaming for logan i was like you know a man yeah. Yeah. but he seems you guys seem again for, well on the show for at least you both laugh he's like Tori's the one that knocked me down. Oh, like he's, we he, he both seem really level about there's a million dollars at stake and we like each other, but when the game is on, the game is on. A hundred percent. And like, you know, I've had like, I've had big relationships in my life and like, yeah, I just need to not do that right now. So I'm happy to have a great time and to connect, but not, I just, I need to just focus on me. Like, yeah. That's where I'm at. For sure. But if one person, even like it's hard again, as we're saying, to not take things personally, it's a good, you guys seem just even healed personality wise, not even in a relationship or humor wise, because mm-hmm. some people just aren't built that way to be like, yeah. still, I'm hurt. You threw a bomb that knocked me off and I didn't. It's like, you guys both seem like, oh, no. Oh. Yeah, it's a game. Yeah. Like, it's a game for a lot of money and you get to play it, but like, I'm not on your team. So, like, game on, you know? Yeah. Like, let's go. You should have seen us when like we had like barbecue parties. They, <laughs> dude, I get crazy about hacky sack or what's that game called? <laughs> what's what's that game when you when you cornhole oh, yeah. into the cornhole? cornhole. I get I get crazy about cornhole. Yeah, what was it than hacky sack? I was visualizing yeah. you like juggling. <laughs> I, like, yeah. <laughs> I forgot what it was called, but I would You're get good. we would get crazy competitive about cornhole. It got to the point where me and Casey. <laughs> And Devin and I forget who he was playing with. I can't remember, but like we were having a tournament for like the girls and the guys of the world. And like me and Casey were like, we played the girls and the guys of the world. For I like the well, no, time. yeah, we acted like it was like the top of the top. The, like yeah. took a tournament, ESPN mm-hmm. of the world. We might have played it for like eight hours that day. I mean, oh it God. got competitive. Like we all play around. So like you know when it's yeah. a game, when it's time to play, like I turn it on. I love to play. Like yeah. It's fun. It's scary sometimes, you know, falling in that water. I actually got a black eye because that stupid uh, capsule hit me in the eye. And like, I was, I had a black eye for the rest of the season. Um, Obviously the season's ending already anyway, but like, so it didn't, it wasn't that long, but you can see Devin has a black eye too. Like he I saw Devin's eye. tonight. Yeah. yeah. So mine's yeah. like in the corner of my eye. So you can't really see it. And like eyeshadow covers it, but like, dude, we get fucked up on these channels. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's fun to play. Yeah. I think we should end it with the, uh, that you guys get fucked up on these shows. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tori, fucked thank up. you for joining us. We really appreciate your time. You stayed a lot longer than we told you you would. So we appreciate you hanging out with us this long. Thank you so much. I Thanks, honestly, if Tori. I didn't have to shower the sweat out of my body right now, then I would stay even longer, but I feel disgusting. So thank you so much for letting me come on the show. You guys are amazing. And yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Hit me up if you ever want to talk again. I'm always open to come back on the show. Thank right. you. Thanks, Have a good night. Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye. All right. Well, that was our Tory deal interview. Pam, thank you so much for setting that up. That was fantastic. Yes, Pam. Pam was a plug. What a great girl. Pam was a plug. Girl. No, she's awesome. I really um, appreciate and am inspired by her level headedness, you know, and like, yes. She, I know it gets hard for her. That's what she was kind of talking about. Like the comments get under everybody's skin, but she still kind of keeps herself in check of reminding herself, like, it's all good. This is a show. This is what we signed up for. You know, like, I feel like I might let it get to me a little bit more. So it's really cool to see that she can get a lot of backlash, but still keeps going very self-aware without being pretentious like I kind of hate like without being like I'm not in a place to make like she's like I don't want to talk about that it makes me feel shitty and it's not yeah. like it. right. it's like right like you're not some self-precious but it's just like it's not cool I don't like it and that's so respectable it's like right that's mm-hmm. how those kinds of things feel without being like the opposite response I'm just sorry I'm thinking out loud that girl that got sent home that was like my process of thinking these sort of millennia these kids today that are like really self-important and like my inner peace is too valuable she's not 
pretentious or self whatever it's just like i'm not gonna deal with that shit. it doesn't feel good and i'm sure yeah. that is part of a learned lesson i mean most people have to go through something to sort of get to the point of being like just gonna leave that be yeah, yeah. so go tori yeah very down to earth yeah thanks for hooking it up pam yeah well thank her for for herness well, <laughs> we should, um, I want to talk a little bit more about the episode. Yeah. If you ladies are down, yeah, um, my big thing I, I want to talk about, I, I don't, I don't want to jump ahead, but I am going to jump ahead is the, is the elimination. Um, right. just cause it was, it was such, it was actually like, I was really into it. I thought it was such a great mm -hmm. idea. Um, when they had it at 15 seconds and they kept killing it, I was like, they got to change something. And then as soon as I said it, they're like, oh, it's 10 seconds now. Love that little, um, that layer of it. I thought that was really awesome. And just mm -hmm. overall, I mean, the twist at the end, Night of Eliminations, like this episode overall was actually the challenge and the elimination. I loved both of them. The in-between stuff, nothing really happened. Yeah, um, of I loved this episode. I felt yeah. like this was yeah. an interactive episode for me. Like when you're talking to the TV or you're like making remarks to yourself or you're saying yeah. like, I think this is happening because of this or they should really do this. Like the whole challenge, I just kept thinking about one, how incredible CT is because he is, but also like the strategies that he's implementing. Like when I said, when Tori was on, I think it's just that he's fearless and confident. He's very experienced. So anytime you hesitate, you're also messing yourself up when the balls are also coming to you. So mm -hmm. if you slow down or if you hesitate, you're going to slip, but there's no room for that with him. Like he is just so steadfast in what he needs to do. He's not scared of anything. And I think him going first, actually that strategy kind of passed on to the other players. And I think that they started to realize like they could catch and throw the balls too, or like they could swing off of them. And I don't know if they would have had the balls to do it if they hadn't seen CT do it first. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. There was one moment. Do you remember when Nelson was dodging a ball and he did this like incredible matrix back? Now he's in matrix. I was like, stop, stop everything right now. Like, this is the moment of the night. This is the moment of my day. Like, pause, rewind, watch again. Like, I just, I just want to love Nelson. I, yeah. I feel like he's just so, so someone that you root for. And then seeing him like, stop, drop. <laughs> back then. Right, like, I, I loved that moment too. And CT is insane. I loved in this daily that it really... Braun was a little bit, but it was about brains and like, like recognize like that's when Devin was like, okay, CT is killing it because he's using the things he's balanced. It's not just about being smart and fast and dodging it. This was a brains operation and everyone, even Logan was facing, Logan was going across, not mm -hmm. forward, but sideways and sort of volleying the things out of his yeah. way, knocking him down. It just, it was interesting. I was impressed with how well Devin did. Me too. I literally, when he started, I was like, okay, Devin. Like I had to eat all my words. I was really happy and proud of him. I mean, he crushed it. This is what I he don't understand though about this. So CT, was it like once you fell off, it re another player went and CT just never fell off? Yeah, is that how it went? Yeah, but then event, yeah, it basically didn't really matter because when people fall up, I don't think you had to wait for them to come back up to stay in order because CT's the way they shot it was CT going every time, but we don't know. We should have see that's something we could have asked Tori. Oh, I, I, I don't you think people went in between. Why not? Because all it all it was based on was and once all those missiles are emptied out of that box, no matter how they get across or don't get across, they don't refill them. So I think there was what eight in there, maybe. All to, or 10 or something like that. And then that, that was badly shown because then I thought mm -hmm. clearly CT's faster. <sighs> we saw just him. We didn't have to wait for an Amanda to get up the ladder. I'm, oh, sorry. Amanda right. didn't get up the, the ladder. Well, they, she she, like, no, she did eventually, Jenna. She did eventually, but she was, she was awful. And so was Nani. And let's remember, they're both on the same damn team. So good luck in the final if they both make it. Holy crap for Emerald. Just saying. I wanted to ask you guys what your thoughts were on them jumping in the water. Well, their team at that point was telling them, that's what I didn't kind of understand the rules because they made it look like Emmy and Kyle never went 
and say it was just like OCT, you're the best, you keep going. They had to edit it, Pam. It would have been too long to wait. So they just edited it, made it look like he was going. But I think in between Emmy and Kyle were going, they just were, they weren't doing well. And mm, CT ended okay. up getting seven because it wasn't, it was based on time, but there was no time limit. So the fact that Sapphire still won, and if they had to go in order, Emmy and um, Logan, holy crap, did they, were they able to climb up every, or who's on the team, Emmy and uh, uh, Kyle, Kyle. if they climbed up every time like that, that's pretty impressive if they had to go in that three-peat order. Um, But yeah, Yeah. and I think the reason they wanted um, Nani and uh, Amanda just jump off, like, you're going to waste one of our bombs. We only have eight of them. If you, you're not going to make it back. Like, they were being that kind of defeated like sorry girls not gonna happen absolutely i agree and i know that every challenge is not going to be under every person's skill set or strength so i totally get it i don't want to sound like an asshole but i guess and it's smart of them it's smart of emerald to be like listen you're not helping get in the water but i couldn't help being feeling a little bit frustrated because it's also like but this is a challenge like shouldn't you be able to kind of do this stuff yeah. But yeah. playing devil's advocate with myself, because, you know, I love to like fight myself. You do need the balance, right? Like you do need the people that maybe aren't the most incredible at every challenge because they bring something else. Like they bring comedy or they bring, like, sometimes you do need people to suck. Some, yeah. some of the times that I've laughed the hardest at the challenges when people have sucked and slipped off and, and been terrible, but it was something I was like, so you're here, you might win a million dollars and you can just jump in the water and not compete. Right. Yeah. It, be, because like at least let me see you fall really bad amanda come on like let me see you tumble <laughs> off that thing. yeah exactly at least slip i don't want to see you <laughs> hold your nose and jump off i, I want to see you fall and right fall. do a cartwheel do something oh. yeah, yeah we're really like dance monkey <laughs> yeah. but again i mean no you're here for our entertainment <laughs> but ct so this is sorry i'm stuck on this because if emmy and kyle tried did they also not get, because how did CT get seven? He just had to keep waiting for, in theory, we don't know. We should have asked Tori, but in theory, he, yes. they, he had to keep waiting for them to climb up the ladder, try again, and then go. And I think at one point CT did fall in the water. So then he just went back up, but they edited it so quickly because they wanted to keep it moving. Right. And I didn't mind that they had to edit it quick, but at the same, and I, I thought it was mm-hmm. somewhat easy to follow along. At least each team went separately tonight. There's less players to keep an eye on. I was able to mark down how many bombs each person got. It was, it was pretty good. I like. I this loved show. this challenge. Yeah. This yeah. challenge was so refreshing. Definitely one of the most exciting of this whole season. Agree, Jenna, with what you said, that this was a great, with both of them, both the daily and the final were like, actually, I cared and didn't know and was like surprised. At yeah. yeah. One of the first times this season, I didn't know who was going to be picked. I didn't know who was going to win. I didn't, there were surprises, lots of surprises. It wasn't just like, we know, we know what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if there was anything huge that I forgot. I think this is also another challenge where experience goes a very, very long way. Like CT and Devin crushed it. Kyle's been around for a while. So you could make the argument that he probably could have performed better, but obviously things over water don't seem to be his shtees. Um, but yeah, like Emmanuel and, and Logan did well, Logan did actually a really good job, but you can see Emmanuel for being as athletic as he is. Like this wasn't really the challenge for him. And I think it's something where if you have the experience, like CT has done things like this for 20 years now, the rest of us are not going in our backyard and practicing something like this. So you could be athletic, but until you do this a few times, you don't really understand like the layout of of how to compete in something like that. With that said, Logan and Emmanuel both got two capsules brought across. I feel like they just showed more of Emmanuel's falls, maybe because they were more entertaining or maybe the fact Mm. that he's a dancer and he has, he should have more balance as Emmy suggested in the comment area of our night, our, our talking head moment. So um, and then the one other thing about Emmanuel, it worked out for him tonight, not saying anything in the, um, nominations, but this is the time, dude, you're the only That's one that hadn't been in. You should have stepped it up and said a bunch of nonsense, even if it was nonsense, but talked, said something so very frustrating as a viewer, but what do you, what do you, what's that, Jenna? I'm a little bit sympathetic to him in this situation because I felt as though he may, was maybe going to cry or get emotional, um, because they showed him for a second. To me, I was like, he is 
reeling. Like, I think he is not okay. I just didn't think he was okay. Like the whole last half of the episode, he performed great in the elimination, but as he's sitting there in the deliberation, they show him and I see him for one second, like make a gesture, make a body movement where he was going to say something. He kind of opened his mouth and then didn't. And I just felt like he was holding back shaking. And I felt like if, if you're upset and somebody's asking you like, are you okay? What's wrong? If you go to speak, you cry, you know, you break. Yes. And I just felt like maybe that's what he was going through. He hasn't actually felt the heat so far this season. And I think this was his first moment of like needing to do something that he was uncomfortable with. And I kind of felt like, Ooh, like he's not okay right now. To jump on your point, that. Jenna, you've got a 41 year old CT yelling at you. I'd be a little afraid yeah. too, if I was Emmanuel. So I see where you're coming from there for sure. Yeah. Well, that's when I was like, you're, you've just been called out. You, I'm the Romanian blood sucking vampire are just going to sit there quietly. True like, that too. Like, Come on. Right. I, I like right. to take because he did have a fear in his eyes that he'd never like, he looked like a little lost little boy. And usually. He yeah. Like, you. And then what? Yeah. And he's laying in the bed of Tori. I'm like, something is not right with Emmanuel. Like he is not okay. But come game time, I guess this is kind of what Tori was alluding to when you're actually just on the field or like in, in the zone, in the, in the course, whatever you want to call it, everything just stops. You know, you have one incentive and that's just to compete. Yeah. I, I also like the way that Tori was like a realist with both Emmanuel and her team. It's like, yep, it is probably going to be, I feel like I, my natural inclination would be like, well, it might not be you don't no worry. It's like, <laughs> you can't sugarcoat it. It's probably going to be one of them and it's better to just when it was Logan and Nelson and she's like yeah one of you guys are probably gonna go. so how happy were you guys when Sapphire won because I was oh, so that's what thank god Sapphire won because if freaking I would pitch a fit if fucking it's like oh the, our 17 people beat your two like oh, are you one kidding? essentially but if it right. didn't work out that way, I'd be like, are you guys are fucking kidding me? And now I have to check out Cutthroat because I don't remember it ever being like, oh, well, 20 verse two deal. <laughs> it's it's just insane to me that you can have a team of five people versus a team of two people and act like that's not going to make them win. I mean, right. By right. The grace of but I wonder, Pam, too, did it work? not in their favor for Emerald, where they had to, if they had to wait for everyone to climb that ladder, it might've taken longer to continue the order of people, especially Amanda. So I'm wondering if that maybe why, is why they lost the time. I they think tied by with, the hair of our chinny chin chins, they didn't win because correct. of- I think it was close. And, and, and Pamela, I mean, who the hell knows? It maybe maybe Emerald really did win because it came down to a time thing and there was no one with a timer that we saw. Wait, so who knows, okay. you know? I had the same thought, Dan. And when they said it's coming down to time, I was like, damn it. I hate when they do times because I don't really trust it. I yeah, don't. And 100%. Like, See, say, Jen is into conspiracies now. I love that. <laughs> I, when they said well, time, I thought about, about, okay. About, sorry, go ahead. Oh time was the only thing that like let me breathe because I was like all right probably no one slowed probably then the five people slowed it down a little more because we saw Amanda couldn't climb the ladder and stuff so I'm thinking I was thinking finally god maybe they do have a chance of winning but I was like yeah. how are you gonna have a numbers competition with double the people on a team I mean, every second is so important and think about how crucial it is to make sure that the timer starts at the exact same time for every single person. I mean, I was doing cup stacking on Thanksgiving with the kids in the family and it's like <laughs> somebody was hitting the timer. And it's like three, two, one, go. And it's like, what if somebody hit the timer after like a few seconds or what if they hit it before go was said it's like it's so precious every single nanosecond right. like, don't do time make them do it again <laughs> that would be cool yeah. i'm with you jenna i hated that it came down to a tie and it's based on time that we know nothing about as a viewer we didn't see it on the screen we can't keep track of it we just have to trust that these producers aren't lying to us which obviously we know that i'm sure they they have to sometimes let's we've, we've called them out before i know i I hope Tori doesn't get in trouble for like breaking down the schedule of how the film no, goes. No, that was a very, like, well, it goes. <laughs> it's a fine line what we can ask her and what we can't. I mean, I wanted to so badly, but I knew I wasn't going to from the start. Ask her about the Ashley situation. I wanted to know so bad, but I knew I wasn't going to do it. 
And especially when all I did was ask her about the Amanda thing where I was like, why is Amanda like hate you so much? Like, I don't get it. Please tell me. And then she wanted to stop talking about it. Like, all right, we're going to keep it like the rest of the way. Yeah. I'm not going to indulge into anything serious because it's nice enough that she wanted to come on our show. But I actually yeah. think that we should all do that more in our real lives, like our daily lives. Like I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with family or friends where it's just like the same topic transcending years it's like can we drop this already so if somebody did something to you like three Christmases ago or whatever it is like let's no longer feed that fire you know what I mean it's like right. what do you think about that just like sending the gossiping like spiraling just like no fuck it I don't care let's move on you shouldn't care either because now this is like crossing over into like all of these different events just drop it <laughs> especially when it's not at all like there's sometimes the fun <laughs> inner family or friends network of like we used to be yeah. like oh, god you know she talks talk shit talk sometimes but not fun shit talk though. that you're like we're bored yeah. to talk about what a compulsive liar our friend is <laughs> like that kind of thing but when it's actually uncomfortable for you and isn't fun it, I just think yeah it's like so simple but she's like let's just move on like let's mm -hmm. you know like yeah well know. I mean she at least she did give us an answer for the Amanda thing Amanda thinks that she's fake about for what reasons Amanda probably doesn't even know at this point so I thought that that was a, a good enough answer for us to at least understand what's well going said. on. That's hilarious, Dan. Act like Amanda <laughs> and say like, fuck you, die, that you're fake. That's what I think. Because I'm like, do you think that Amanda, that's what I asked when she was like, I don't even want to talk about it. Because I'm like, do you think Amanda's making up? Like, does she really think you're fake because you didn't throw a challenge so that Devin and Josh were safe? Like, does she? Because that's not logical to me. So it's like, is she putting on a, like, remember when Veronica was like, I think CT hyped up like, oh, Veronica, work out because I right. wasn't going to hook up with, like, yeah. is Amanda for screen time hating Tori? Is that her plot? Well, Amanda's like, thing in general is just, is hating on everybody. That's, that's all her talking head moments <laughs> are her really hating on her like, professionals. Really and everybody has a perception of things, you know, like if you ever talk to like a friend or somebody who sees a situation and they think X, Y, and Z, and you're like, what? That is not at all what I thought was going down. Right. It's like, so everyone, I guess, has their opinion on somebody else and everybody is not going to like everybody that's just not how the world works you're not going to be friends with everybody you're not going to like everybody so I think when it comes to Amanda she just maybe has some sort of thing but like she just has some misperception um well Amanda you know, doesn't from care her about vantage point. the game and Tori does so it's like there's a difference between sacrificing yourself for a friend which is great and noble in friendship games or whatever challenge you're playing but if you want to win a million dollars, I don't, I don't understand any of Amanda's logic. Which yeah. That kind of thing started throwing me. I was really enjoying Amanda until now I'm like, you're. She's still going to be Amanda. She's Amanda got to be Amanda. Amanda. You're right. Uh, ladies, let's, Amanda. let's talk predictions before we get out of here, because we're left with this twist. We're left with this cliffhanger. Night of eliminations is coming up. We know two people are going home. What are our predictions? Do we think it's going to be one guy, one girl? Is it a double elimination? So it would be two girls in there, two guys in there. And then that's, that's what I think that's what's going to, and then do they go back to singles after this or do they form new teams? What, what do we all think about all that? What happened in cutthroat? Does anyone remember? No idea. I forget, but I'll tell okay. you, I think, okay, go on, Jenna, you go first. Well, it, <laughs> I guess it's less of a prediction, more of, I, I guess, a desire, a I guess, desire, of how yes. I would want things to go is I feel like they should do like a roulette spin to see, like spin something to land on somebody's face. Like how else do they work out who goes in or they have to call each other out by name, but I don't know who really gets that authority right away. Is it a vote? And they put people on the spot and they, they vote two people in because it's two people that have to go in. So it's hard to have to say two names. So I'm just very curious of how it's going to lay out, but I almost kind of want it to be random because that way it's unpredictable for us. And that way we know that strong people are, are probably going to go in. Everybody's strong at this point, but we haven't seen like Nani in, in a elimination this entire season. Right. Casey, none of these people have actually been in the elimination. Emmy already has. So I'm just curious of like what will happen. I'd love to just see unpredictable kind of random people go into the elimination. Here's what I I'm hoping. You ready for this? 
Uh, Pam, you go first. I'll go last. It's well, well, I have a feeling that we're going to be on the same page. So if I start saying what you're thinking, you can take over. Okay, go ahead. I think it's going to be, and I hope, purge style, where everyone's going to have to participate and the loser girl and the loser guy will go home. Okay. That so would you're, be you're amazing. Close to what I'm hoping for. I'm okay. hoping they all got to like stand on one foot on a block of ice. Every single person, right? The first two girls to get off, the first two guys to fall off, then they have to do their oh. thing together. And then that's kind of like you. a purge, but not really. And then whoever loses goes home and there you go. Right. Like, I love that. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, do that you way think it's more that's... fair. It's, I hate the, I don't want them to vote Jenna. You know what I mean? I don't want to do another vote right now. Cause that's a, that's a popularity contest. I just want to see yeah. who really right. wants it. Cause TJ said night of eliminations. Does that mean all night? So go stand on that block of ice for three hours. And then whoever finally loses then has to do like a, a pole wrestle. Who the hell cares? But something like that would be an epic episode 18 which right. is also my yeah. lucky number. So there you go. Agreed. Yeah. Um, do you guys think that Emmanuel should be exempt because he already performed in the elimination? No. I, I kind of do think so because <laughs> you have to put your all into the elimination. He had to sprint. Yes, he's in amazing shape and he has endurance, but that sucks. His legs are probably sore as hell. He's already sweating. He's already got the cardio going where he might be totally exhausted. That sucks. No one else has ever had to do that. Mm. That's kind of unfair. Like I know all's fair in love and war. I don't want this Hannah to happen, but what if it, what but, if he, what, oh, go on. What but yeah, if, that just feels like something that's, I, if I was him, I'd be like, damn. What if it's not very endurance heavy though? If it's, I don't Standing know. Right. On the block of ice. Um, what yeah. if it's the, what if only the people that have never appeared on an elimination are up for grabs mm. for this season? So like CT would be up for one, Casey, Devin. Nani, Devin. That would be Emmy it. Would it would be, have to be Emmy CT would be first safe. Devin. Yeah. Emmy would be safe. Um, Kyle, Nani. Kyle would be safe. What's Casey that? Jen? Nani. First Nani. <laughs> <laughs> and then That's CT the most storyline they'd have all season together right there. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, that would be interesting. Nelson's gone in, right? Or maybe he yeah, hasn't. No, yeah. I don't know. No. I don't think so, actually. Wait. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't remember either, but I thought Logan was going to call him out tonight, and I was like, "Poor freaking." No, I thought Logan. No matter what, I know that he had the pact with Devin, and he's too nice of a guy for this. But I thought for sure he was going to call out Devin because. Even though I thought maybe it could be a puzzle and that's why he didn't call Devin, when you saw that it was endurance, there's no way Devin would have made it over that log. And I know, do we think Tori was thinking the same name, but that's why she couldn't say it? But um, did, uh, Devin yeah. was the clear choice. Devin, she said, and she said that Devin psyched him out by being like, it's a puzzle, it's a puzzle. Look right, at the exactly. Very smart, Devin. Great yeah. move. See, the, you wonder why I like Devin so much. That is a boss move right there to oh, yeah. fully lie. Oh, this looks like a puzzle to me. To a guy from Spain who has never been on this show and doesn't oh. know a puzzle from a, an endurance run. Boom, he believes Devin and Devin's his friend. Right. And you know what? Now that you say that, I'm even more pissed that Logan didn't say Devin's name because it's like <laughs> Devin's going to manipulate you and use you to his advantage. Right. You use him to his advantage, to your advantage and throw him into an elimination that you will likely beat him in. Like Devin can perform. And I think that he, he would have had a good showing, but I think what? ultimately you don't think he would have had a good showing Devin. This is not jumping over things and no. He, he would have no, he would have done, he would have done, I think Logan would have won, but I think Devin would have kept up for the 15 it. second one, no problem. I don't think it would have been a smashing just based off of the challenge that we saw today. I think Devin has more in him than we realize. Right. And I think he just waits for the right moment to really like use everything he has. Cause listen, you have adrenaline too. Like you would be better than you would expect if you were in an adrenaline situation. Like we all surpass our own capabilities when we're in that sort of yeah, heat of the moment. Yeah, gassed out though last week at the money challenge. Like, but that, Devin, yeah, Devin, yeah. I mean, Devin's again, elimination though. Like I, I think he would have, I think he would have showed. But that's that. speed and agility and body weight and lifting. Like that's vaulting over a, Logan would have smashed him. Like, I think the only person that could have beaten, just because you have to sort of be light on your feet, I don't know what a better way to say it, agile. I think the only mm -hmm. person that Logan would have lost to was Emmanuel. 
Okay. Um, I had another thought though. So when Logan finally falls, I think if he had gotten up and ran to the buzzer, whatever the heck it was, the vault puller, I think he would have made it. I think he would have made it in time. There was still like four and a half seconds. The vault, the rocket, I love how we have our own names for things now. The vault rocket was not that far from the vault pulley thing. If he would, he had four seconds. He would have made it. But he just died. He just that is a hot down. take, Jenna. I don't know. I thought that when he fell, he <laughs> just considered himself cooked. Like he didn't even want to. That's get what up. I mean. Like, get up, man! You don't know how many seconds you have left. Like, even if it was two, maybe if you sprinted, maybe it wouldn't have passed over to the next go that well, and you would have lost eventually. But like, you just you you laid down and kind of gave up on yourself. Yeah, it would have been nice to see him crawl. And they put that in slow motion. They put some music behind it. He's going through the dirt, the sand, the grub. Oh, that would have been good. Yeah. Crawling in my skin. There yes. you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, that was my two cents on it. I was like, Logan, you don't know how much you, you would have had it if you had tried. Um, Think about so- all the miracles in sports. They always are crazy, but they work. That's why they're amazing. So if he had just gotten up and sprinted, I believe he would have made it. So I want to get you guys' take on this stupid. So do you have this day? Are you, do you want to get the take on this? What, what, so this Amanda versus Theo, have you? Yes. I did see it actually. Yes. Yeah. What's your take on that. So I'm sure the people know. The people My take know. is well, that it sounds like we're in high school. Like these are literally high school caliber arguments. On Pam, you should media. explain, you explain the post so that we can then, so that our viewers know if they haven't seen it yet. So I think it started and my chronology might be a little off. So Theo posted and I can actually look something like, Hey, my first season, you know, I was partying all the time. I was doing this and that. And I, I, I'd love a second chance, but then I got sent home as an alternate on season 30, whatever. Oh, well. And then he's like, fuck it. I don't need the weekly paycheck. I just want the prize money. And Amanda is like, I'm dead. Yeah. Loser. Fuck you, loser. Like, um, you can't sit Desperate with to the max. Desperate can't relate. To the max. Can't relate. Can't get a call back, you know, whatever. And I'm like, first of all, yes, of course, that's like lame. But I also thought, that's not like desperate and lame. That's that's like an offhanded comment. I don't think he was like, please let me on the show. Yeah. Write an email to Buttam and Murray saying, please, please let me go. I'll do it for free. It's like, fuck it. I'm not there for the 500 a week. I want right. a million dollars. Like, I thought that was a valid, that was my take on it. Like, I'll, why is I'll play, here? I'll play a, a little bit of both sides here. I okay. think, I think a lot of these rookies are going to be going through what Theo goes through where they're they're huge on a national MTV show. But the problem is, is we're not becoming attached to these characters. And these rookies are a dime a dozen and they are, they're hot for one second. I mean, Thea was like a big a name big stud job. for like two yeah. seasons or we were at after buzz at that time. And now he's been off for so many seasons that there's no, there, what storyline is there to bring him back on? So I him would saying like to that see he'll, him. Huh? I would, I would like, like to see him. him. He was but that's why I'm playing the other side because I could care less if I see him or not. But Amanda, oh. I feel like, did they, were they on a season together at all? Were they? Because I feel like she is just doing this for her Twitter account just to get, just to keep herself relevant. So to me, they're both ridiculous in that regard. Um, Because if MTV, Theo, if MTV wants you, they will give you a call. I just think that he's too far removed from the show at this point yeah. to just bring him back out of nowhere they're going to be looking for the next big thing from another big person from I a just different reality didn't show. think it was that like cringy of a comment i guess that's my point the like being i didn't think it was like pathetic and desperate i just thought it was like fuck it i'm there for a million dollars not a fucking weekly you have like, to understand that, was- like these people are they, they they're trying to all stay very relevant and that is what theo is doing with that he wants to be back on the challenge and the- <laughs> it was like he's like really wanting to be on and it was kind of embarrassing and i, I mm. honestly think that like these like what does he do for work i don't know I, I mean he- i know he said he'd do it for free but it's more about the fall like, that's what tori talked about it tonight it's all about social media now he doesn't care about the daily paycheck because he's just trying to get more followers to his channel so he can represent bang energy drink or whatever the hell it is you know what i mean so <laughs> that's just the truth i don't well listen i used to play sports i I think everybody here did but you 
I, I don't know. Some sports. You never played sports. I mean, I swear. I mean, like, I didn't I, I'm, just, I'm setting the preface of like, I'm not special. I, I didn't do our kids sports. Like, I know that we've all played sports, but I did it very seriously where there's a part of me at my age really wishes I could go back and do something to that level of competition. Right. So I do think he was an Olympian. Like, I think the competition really does right. mean a lot to him. Like I he forgot. wants to do something. He worked his whole life to be an athlete and to compete. He doesn't want to sit on the couch. He doesn't want to work in an office. Right. He doesn't want to work in a coffee shop. Like he wants to do something competitive. And to be an influencer with a million dollars because you won the challenge. Like yeah. also, right. Like CT, right. Like, right. I'm sure they want the Instagram and the social media and whatever. But yes, I agree, Jen. I forgot he was an Olympian. I was a debater in high school. If I'm, dead. Like, I'm oh, dead. This oh, is what I'm dead at is Pam being like, I didn't play sports. Right. <laughs> But it's like, if there was a lawyer competition or a debate, I would be like, sign me up. I don't care. I want to be like, right. Like put me in coach. I don't care if you pay me whatever the weekly paycheck is. I'm sure Theo can get from a bang, bang post or whatever bang energy drink one. I'm sure the weekly paycheck is probably pretty minuscule based on for rookies. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's something. But, but we I'm all sure. know the chances of winning the challenge are very but slim. Theo so was I, in the two final. Didn't he make the final every he made the final. He, I, 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 I didn't he say finished. he didn't make the final. I just said it's a slim, it's slim to but win. The math, the, the math problem, him and Kara would have won if they didn't get fucked on that math problem. <laughs> I'm assuming that you guys can't hear my fiance snoring, but he literally sounds like 10 fucking grizzly bears. And I cannot believe you can't hear it. Well do you have an issue sleeping at night next to him or what do you do? Yes. I, well, I don't know what sleep is. I sleep sometimes. I have to sleep oh, on the couch. Noise on. My husband snores and we have a it's like, just like eh, okay, machine. we can disregard it. Doesn't have to do with the challenge. Not good for the show, but Wait, it's Jenna, do you know that Dan's engaged? Did you, did I we, do. Wait, let's announce that. I know everybody. Yeah. There we and go. Mr. And Mrs. So yes. Uh, P- uh, Pam and Jenna both wrote on my social media somewhere. Congrats. So yes, thank you both. This is uh, my wedding this was at our yay for both of you guys that are soon to be mr and mrs it was so cute good job dan yes, congratulations thank you, thank you, ladies. it was a it was a wonderful weekend she was 100 percent surprised which is all i want i just wanted her to not have any idea what's happening i put the video out on my instagram i don't know if you saw the the we, my sister was actually able to record it without stacy knowing so that was huge oh. and um I can send, I'll send it to you after this, if you'd like, but uh, yeah, it was, it was phenomenal. And uh, we're both super happy and it's great. Everything's great over here. So no complaints. All my engaged co-hosts. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now there's two engagees and one uh, married lady. There you go. Two rings. Bam girl. Boom. All right. All right. Well, if we have nothing else to talk this about, be we a should, long uh, episode for everyone yeah. to listen to. <laughs> yeah, we should we should go and post this. Um, hashtag Tory Deal. If you're uh, still listening, uh, I, yeah, I feel like Tory the comment deal. section is going to blow up and uh, tell us all what you think of that interview with her. I thought it went really well, and I thought she was great. So, and thank you to our Patreons. Check out our Patreon. We're covering all. This. So check that out. Yeah, all stars. Fun. All stars. Uh, three we just put up yesterday and we're going to cover four hopefully on friday episode four so all the all-stars episodes are up on patreon at the challenge after show uh patreon.com slash the challenge after show very very easy to find so all right well we'll see y'all next week episode 18 next week I'm thinking it's going to be 20 right. goddamn episodes this season yet oh, again. It really got good. Episode 17, guys. It got good. With the reunion, probably 24 episodes. So you think there's going to be a three? Maybe they'll go for a three-part reunion this year instead of a two-parter. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, All right. All right everybody. Good Thank night. you.